the G20 has contributed to making India world ready and the world India ready. The declaration that the leaders have agreed on today focuses on promoting strong, sustainable, balanced and inclusive growth. It seeks to accelerate progress on SDGs and, co and has come up with an action plan accordingly. It envisages a green development pact for a sustainable future. It endorses high-level principles on lifestyle for sustainable development, voluntary principles on hydrogen, the Chennai principles for a sustainable and resilient blue economy, and the Deccan principles on food security and nutrition, among others. The transformative and inclusive role of technology has been highlighted with a focus on digital public infrastructure. The Indian Presidency's proposal of a One Future Alliance has also been noted. The G20 has reaffirmed the fundamental importance of gender equality and committed to halve the digital gender gap by 2030. Recognizing that the post-pandemic world order must necessarily be different from the world before it, the leaders have also emphasized the need to reinvigorate multilateralism and reform international financial institutions. This is particularly relevant to managing global debt vulnerabilities. So, as you can see, there have been many far-reaching and very consequential policies and decisions that have been agreed upon today. Keeping all that in mind, I would, at this stage, request Finance Minister to highlight the key issues from the finance track. Thank you, Jay Shankarji. As, as was said by the External Affairs Minister, under the guidance of Honorable Prime Minister, India's G20 Presidency has worked for the theme One Earth, One Family, One Future. So today we are in a position to adopt, through the finance track, people-centric, action-oriented and far-sighted approach, and as a result of which several outcomes of the finance track will certainly reflect uh, these objectives with which we started the negotiations. It has been very clear in our mind that we should ensure that no one is left behind in our pursuit of global solutions. So we have endeavored to support countries, especially those from the global south, to be an integral part of the global decision-making process. The G20, as you all know, is a very diverse group. Each country is at different milestones of economic development, and their trajectory is also very different in achieving their developmental goals. So through well-curated debates and careful assimilation of all the perspectives, the Indian Presidency has crafted solutions that resonate with each member, offering a shared path forward for all. Many action-oriented outcomes of this presidency contain comprehensive strategies that cater to the unique needs and aspirations of all developing nations. We assume the presidency at a challenging time of geopolitical tension. The Indian presidency has worked to ensure that these divergences don't overshadow the core developmental outcomes or concerns of the global community that demand collaborative solutions. So today, as I look back at the 10 months of Indian Presidency, I am left with gratitude and satisfaction. I can confidently state that the Indian G20 Presidency has walked the talk. Now, let me share with you just some of the key achievements of the Indian Presidency, the finance track. Um, first one is the outcomes which are focused on strengthening the MDBs to address shared global challenges of the 21st century. So under this strengthening MDBs, 
there are four key highlights that I'd like to bring to your notice. The first one is agreement on the need for a better, bigger and more effective MDBs. It is so necessary to have better, bigger and more effective MDBs because the developmental demands from all across the globe is so high, these institutions will have to be better and bigger. This is also going to contribute to enhancing representation and voice of developing countries in the decision making. The second under the MDB, strengthening of MDBs, is the G20 Independent Expert Group on strengthening MDBs and this was established and it has submitted its volume one. The first report, their report consists of two volumes. The first volume has already been sub, uh, submitted. The report recommends a triple agenda that dovetails with a call for the bigger, better and more effective MDBs. The third point in strengthening MDBs is the agreement to collectively work towards boosting World Bank's financing capacity. Here the options will be explored that will deliver a powerful boost to the IBRD headroom to support low-income and middle-income countries. And the fourth, endorsement for the G20 roadmap for implementation of the recommendations of an independent panel on capital adequacy framework of uh, the MDBs. So the CAF recommendations are focused on enabling MDBs to use the existing resources effectively. The roadmap estimates, this is going to be of interest for the media, the roadmap estimates that implementation of the CAF and the measures thereby will potentially yield additional lending headroom of approximately 200 billion US dollars over the next decade. 